A good late afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sage and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. And we know there's no better way to wind down the day than with the market closing commentary. So let's get started. And the Australian shares ended lower in a choppy trade on Wednesday as the mining and energy stocks tumbled owing to a fall in commodity prices. The week closing at the Wall Street Overnight trading also dented the market sentiments while investors awaited the release of the U.S. inflation numbers for more clarity on the Federal Reserve's path to normalising policy. The benchmark ASX 200 index closed 10.30 points or 0.14 per cent and earlier today the index opened higher and rose as much as 0.35 per cent. The market paired the early gains in the afternoon session as sell-offs intensified in materials and energy sectors. The market witnessed relatively thin trade today as investors took a wait-and-see approach ahead of the release of the US inflation data. And although Federal Chairman Jerome Powell maintained in the latest policy announcement that the central bank could be patient with regards to rate hikes, but spikes in inflation would rekindle talk of earlier than expected rate hikes. And the market with indicating the overall strength was weak as 9 of 11 sectors ended in the negative terrain. The materials sector was the biggest loser with a 1.5% loss followed by 1.2% falls in the energy sector. And among others, telecom, consumer staples, healthcare, tech, A REITs and consumer discretionary ended in the red zone. Meanwhile, the utilities sector emerged as the biggest gainer by rising 0.8%. It was followed by a 0.6% gain in the financial space, with all the big four banks, Westpac, Commonwealth Bank, ANZ Bank and NAB, settling in the positive terrain. Let's take a look at the top gainers and losers of the day, and the biggest gainer on the ASX was the beverage and tobacco business United Malt Group, who rose 4.7%, and some of the other top gainers were gold producer Chalice Mining, NAB, Domino's Pizza and tech firm WiseTech Global. Now on the flip side, the steel producer Blue Scope Steel topped the losers chart with a 5.8% loss and some of the other notable losers were tech firm Nearmap and mineral explorer Orocoba. Let's shift our lens now to the stocks that grabbed the investors' attention today. Shares of gold explorer Chalice Mining extended the rally for the second straight session following its maiden resource estimate. And the shares surged 10% today after rising as much as 30% in the previous session. The stock has gained momentum after it released its mineral resource estimate for the Gonville deposit at the Julema project in Western Australia. And shares of National Australia Bank rebounded over 4% on Wednesday after falling over 2% in the previous session. And the lender on Tuesday reported its annual earnings and also declared a dividend. NAB on the country's largest banks, or one of the country's largest banks should I say, posted a 76.8% growth in net profit for the year ended September 30th, 2021. And revenue fell 2.2% while loan growth rose by 7%. And the lender also announced a final dividend of 67 cents Australian per share compared with 30 cents Australian in the fiscal 2020. And shares of Gold Road Resources traded marginally lower after the gold miner said it will not improve on its 56 cents per share offer to buy Apollo Consolidated. The company has also decided to accept the off-market takeover offer made by Remelius Resources to buy its shares in Apollo. And last month, Remelius made an offer to acquire Apollo through an off-market takeover for a combined script and cash deal worth 56 cents a share. A few days later, Gold Road matched the offer with an all-cash takeover worth 56 cents a share. However, Remelius raised the offer to 62 cents a share on the 1st November, while Gold Road refused to match the offer. And shares of Pushpay Holdings tumbled as much as 23% today after it released half-year results and a downgrade of its outlook. Revenue for the six months to 30th September was up 8% on the same period last year and total profit was up 43%. The earnings would be higher, but a new strategy to target the Catholic Church will cost about 2 million US dollars. And shares of mining and exploration firm Equinox Resources traded flat. The company has appointed Craig Wallace as the General Manager of Geology, Heritage, Environment and Safety and he now constitutes a part of the core management team implementing EQN's development focus strategy for the Hammersley Iron Ore Project in Western Australia. And the share price of technology, hardware and equipment Zimmy 
rose over 7% on securing new orders. The company said it has received an additional order from its distribution partner, Steel Line Garage Doors, and this order is in addition to the previous order placed by Steel Line for 3,250 devices earlier this year. And oil and gas producer ADX Energy dropped over 4% after it released results of an independent review undertaken by independent consultants RISC. The company stated that RISC has done an independent review on the Anshof and OHO prospects located in Upper Austria. And that was Anshof and OHO prospects located in Upper Austria. And mining and mineral exploration company Lafroy Exploration announced that it has received firm commitments to raise six million Australian dollars through a heavily oversubscribed placement to institutional and sophisticated investors. And Lefroy Exploration has confirmed that this placement forms a part of its total equity raising of up to 6.3 million Australian dollars. And following the announcement, the Lefroy Exploration stock was trading 3.6% higher. And now we'll just take a small break, but please stay tuned with me. I'll be back with more of the trending market updates. Tune in to stay updated while on the move. We will tell you where the crypto craze has reached. Where the property market is headed next. What the world is doing to become more environmentally friendly. Apart from tracking the daily market charter. Be on top of the latest news and announcements with Calkine TV. Hello, welcome back to Sage here and you are watching the Market Close Commentary by Calkine TV. Let's move on now to the next segment where we take a look east towards the Asian market performance. And shares in the Asia Pacific region were flashing mostly red on Wednesday following a negative finish at Wall Street in the overnight trade. Investors reacted to Chinese inflation data for October while they kept an eye on the US inflation numbers slated to be released tonight. And China's Shanghai Composite was the biggest loser in the regional market, falling nearly 1.2% following inflation numbers. China was followed by Hang Seng Index in Hong Kong, which dropped 1.1%. And China's consumer inflation number came in line with market expectations, according to the official data released this morning. The consumer price index climbed 1.5% in October compared to the year ago period. And according to a Reuters poll, the CPI was expected to rise by 1.4%. Japan's Nikkei was down 0.7%, while South Korea's Kospi tumbled over 1%. The Straits Times Index in Singapore traded lower by 0.6%, while Thailand's SET Composite fell 0.35%, and India's BSE Sensex also declined 0.6% in the opening deal, mirroring the weakness in the Asian peers. And in the last segment of the show, let's have a quick look over the crypto market's performance. And the cryptocurrencies were trading in red during the Asian trading hour on Wednesday as investors turned cautious ahead of the US inflation data slated to be released later tonight. And Bitcoin and Ether retreated from their record highs touched in the previous session. The total market cap of the global cryptocurrency dropped 1.6% over the past 24 hours to US $2.88 trillion after actually reaching over the $3 trillion mark for the very first time. However, the crypto market continued to see a surge in volume as a trading of coins worth 135.93 billion US dollars changed hands over the counter, up 11% over the last day. And Bitcoin, world's most popular currency, was down 2.8% over the last 24 hours. The price of the world's largest crypto has touched an all-time high on the 9th of November. And Ether, the world's second largest crypto, also dropped 2.5%, retreating from its record high from the previous day. The coin linked to Ethereum blockchain has surged nearly 70% against the dollar since the start of October, while it had nearly doubled since June this year. And meanwhile, the price of Cardano, the third largest cryptocurrency by market cap, rose 2.6%. The meme currency Dogecoin tumbled 4.8%, while Shiba Inu fell over 3%. And among the major digital coins that dropped today, includes a Binance Coin, Solana, Tether, XRP, Terra, Chainlink, Polygon and Algorand. 
And thanks for your company on that one. But that's a wrap, folks, and hope you found the market closing commentary informative. We'll be back on tomorrow live from Sydney at 9.30 in the morning with the first report on the pre-market scenario to prepare you for the trading day. Take care and stay safe till then. Sage signing off.